the level three drawing. It looks kind of like a brick with a chunk taken out of the corner. Um, I have marked this one up showing you which sides, or sorry, which faces of the object are visible from which side. As you can see, it is fully dimensioned and uh, roughly the same dimensions as the previous two drawings. Two inches deep, one inch wide, one inch high, uh, and beyond that there's a few details to be concerned about. As always, you are not responsible for drawing the isometric, but you are responsible for drawing the top, side, and front views. So, um, let's start. Everybody Get this up on your screen. You've got the technical drawing packet, and let's draw along. We're going to start, as always, by drawing our border. So kind of uh, creating that whole setup so that our drawings are nice and consistent and legible. I'm going to just come down here a little bit so that we can see this a little closer up. There we go. And here's how I do it quickly. I start by measuring across the top of the page. I come in a half inch here and I make a little mark. Then I come a half inch over from the 11 and I make a little mark. Okay. Then I go all the way down to the bottom of the page, make sure my ruler is lined up on the left. It doesn't really matter how high up it is as long as it's closer to the bottom. I measure a half inch in from the left and I measure a half inch in from the right. Now I can turn my ruler sideways and I can do the same thing and very efficiently I know that this has to be a half inch I'm lining my ruler up between these two points this has to be a half inch that's where that top of the title bar is that's a half inch that's the bottom of the title bar and that's a half inch from the bottom right there I can just go ahead and connect these dots and now, all I have to do is come over here on the other side and do the same thing. So I've got a half inch here, a half inch here, and a half inch here. I'm going to make sure it's lined up against these dots. And I'm going to go from the marks I made all the way across. And now it's just a question of connecting the dots. Who out there in TV land is drawing along with me? I'm going to ask you to briefly show your work on camera just to show me that you are able to follow this. Any volunteers? So um, let's... I, while you're fixing that, I'm going to go ahead and put in the title bar. Again, I'm using light lines to make my guidelines for the text. That's going inside the title bar. They're so light that you can probably barely see them in the camera. But that is what's helping my text to stay in between the guidelines and look really neat. Today is March 23rd. And this is level three. Nice and neat. Next thing I want to do is I want to start to visualize what this is going to look like. Luckily, this is the completed drawing from last spring. As you can see, it has the three views, it has labels, but it does not have dimensions. You would kind of visualize this before you start drawing. You want to understand that when you're looking down at the top of this thing, you're looking at that kind of like uh, Q-shaped thing on its side and you're going to see this rectangle here of the top of uh, that little indentation. So you're going to try to imagine that in your head and then you're going to imagine coming over to the side view and seeing that letter P or that fat letter L that we saw in level two. Plus 
this little rectangle up here behind it because remember when you're looking from here that's what's visible and you're going to visualize yourself coming over here to the front view and seeing that backwards letter L with the little square right on top of it because again you're not seeing this stuff in between when you're looking at it from the front that's going away from you you want to see the stuff that is actually meeting your eye right not like this but like that and we will get into some more complicated drawings later that uh, you can't exactly um, discredit the angle that something is at. Maybe it's at a diagonal, right? So this, this does get more complicated, but we're going to ease our way into it gradually. Okay, so we've got our visualization of, of what the final thing should look like. Uh, and we can sketch that out or something on a, on a napkin. It doesn't really matter. What we want to do at this point is uh, we want to actually start drawing. So we're going to start with the top view because it's right there. And I know that my top view is going to be a, a rectangular shape. And I want it to be parallel to the, the title bar of the page. So I'm just putting my ruler up against that. And I'm just using this centimeter side as a straight edge so that I can make a nice horizontal light line. See that? Very light. And now I'm going to go in and, and find those two inches. Because I want to be able to line this up nice and parallel, I'm going to go ahead and make the left edge of those views as well. Just as I did yesterday, you saw that I'm saving time by dropping that line all the way down. I chose this just because it's the width of my ruler and I can make it parallel to the edge, uh, to the border of my drawing. But now that I've done that, I need to start measuring. I need to understand how wide the top view is. And how wide is it? Exactly, two inches. And we know that because it says so here. And what else do we see here about the width? What else should we be concerned about when we look at the dimensions? There is a one inch part as well, exactly. Fantastic. So as we go through, we want to go ahead and mark up anything that we're going to need to know about the width of this thing. So there's a one inch and a two inch part. And we're going to come down here because in order to draw parallel straight lines, we need two points to connect them to, right? So one inch and two inch. And that's going to enable us to lightly come down and draw these lines connecting our top and bottom drawing so that it can be more clear and so that we don't have to do quite as much work later. And this is so light you can barely see it. I'm barely applying pressure here. It's just strong enough that I can see it when I go back in and I uh, create those darker lines. So now I need the, the width of the top view remember, I'm calling this the width of the top view because we're calling this the front, right? So the top view has a depth. And so from the front, that's how deep is the object and how wide is the object in that direction when you're looking at the isometric. So this is actually the object's width and this is its depth. We, we've been concerned with the depth. We've got a two inch overall depth with a one inch part in the middle. And with the width, we have a, what, one inch overall width and a half inch inside dimension there that we need to be concerned about. So we're going to go ahead and do one inch with a half inch in the middle that we are very worried about. And we're going to do the same thing over here because we need two dots to connect those lines with. That way they are parallel. And at this point, I have enough information that this doesn't have to be a light line. I can actually do this heavily because I know exactly how big that line has to be. And the same thing is true here. I can go just to there. And the same thing is true here now that I'm tracing over it. Notice how I'm doing all my horizontal lines at once. Now I'm going to do all my vertical lines at once. One, 
two, three. And why do I do all the vertical lines at once and all the horizontal lines at once? Why did I do that? Why didn't I just like do this one and then do that one? Yeah, exactly. Moving the ruler takes up time. It also creates opportunities for me to make mistakes. The more I'm moving my ruler around and my straight edge around, the more I might lose sight of where I'm kind of aiming for, right? So I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm working efficiently uh, in a way that also makes a lot of sense. And you kind of have to be planning ahead, and that's what we're going to do now as we create the side view, which we know should look something like this because, again, we visualized it ahead of time. We already looked at this and we thought, okay, it's got to look like this fat letter L with a little rectangle on top of it. The whole thing should form a kind of a rectangle with a little bit like that. And we can look at the isometric. We know the dimensions. We know that this is an inch over and we know that this is a half inch up because this is a half inch up. So we can just go ahead and start drawing. Oh, Christopher called me out on a mistake that I made. Absolutely. He pointed out that this little part is supposed to be on the bottom, not the top. Thank you, Christopher. Even I make mistakes when I'm not being careful. And I'm not being careful when I'm trying to talk too much and draw at the same time. So thank you for pointing that out, Christopher. Look at that. That's what the top view is supposed to look like. Just going to see if I can clean that up a little bit. Silly Mr. Z. There we go. Is that better, Christopher? All right. We were about to draw the side view. This time I'm going to draw it correctly. The side view is going to look like the incorrect drawing I just did of the top view. And here goes. I'm lining my ruler up with the bottom of the border. I'm doing a heavy line from here to here because I already have the width of that. And then I'm going to do a light line and extend it over so I'm ready to do the um, front view. I know that this is going to be an inch high, so I'm taking any random inch on my ruler and using it. Just like that. I can go over here and measure. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I also need to know a half inch up. Half inch. Whole inch, half inch. Now I'm ready to start drawing a lot of finished vertical lines since my ruler is already vertical. That's going to go from here to here. That is going to go from here to here. Now I'm ready for some horizontals. Check this out. I've lined it up. I'm going to bring this over lightly. I screwed it up again. I don't believe it. That was supposed to be up here. How do you like that? I'm just doing this whole drawing wrong. Mr. Z is broken. Who broke Mr. Z? All right. Side view this time. There we go. <laughs> all right. It takes all my brain power to not make mistakes like this. So you can imagine it takes a little bit of concentration to make a good technical drawing. Does that look better to you? I think so. Now we can go over here and knock out that uh, front view which again, we know it is one inch wide and one inch high because there's our inch and there's our inch. Half inch in from here and a half inch up from here. And this time, let's see if I can actually make the shape right on the first try. Remember, the eraser is kind of an important tool in technical drawing. And if you make a mistake, you should fix it. Uh, that's how this works. Otherwise, you are practicing the bad habit of not making correct technical drawings. And this is all about clarity and communication. 
So it's really important to do it right. Okay, I got one of them correct on the first try. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Z. Now it's time to label and dimension the views. I'm going to label my views. Let's all label our views. Light lines. Drawing my guidelines first so I can get that all out of the way at once. It's now time to dimension the drawing and we are almost done. Uh, as always, where do we want to start our dimensions from? What's the first view that we want to dimension? The side view, that's right. And why do we want to do the side view first? Yeah, because it gives you a lot of information about the other views. So let's get started on dimensioning the side view. We just need those dimensioning lines. Remember, they don't touch the drawing, but they come close to it. And we've got these ones over here. I like to do the dimensioning lines in between the views so that it really tells you that they communicate with more than one of the views. We are almost ready here. Let's go and choose where we're going to label the dimensions. I like to do things in a way that makes a lot of sense. So for example, I, I'm dimensioning the, the solid sticky out part. So I'm going to do the same thing here rather than the part with the gap. And now I'm ready to put in my guidelines and add my text. That's one inch. That's two inches. That's one inch. That's half inch. And then I get to choose uh, where I want to dimension the width information of this drawing. I've already given this one and I've given this one. Both of them were given in the side view. And now where do I want to dimension the width? I can do it on the front view or I can do it on the top view. So I'm going to do this. And it is nice to do it this way because I have these dimensions here that I can use to line them up and it's going to look nice. Although I guess I could use these ones to line up if I did the top view too. Maybe I'll do that next time. We'll see. And let's see, we've got the lower one, which is like this. And I'm going to go through, I want to show you a, a different kind that you can do. This is going to be mind blowing for you. Guidelines come next. And we've got one inch, one half inch. Now check this out. I'm now into the part where I, I love so much and I get to do all my labels, uh, sorry, all my little arrows, which I like to zoom in for so you can see me doing all my awesome little arrows. Um, so here I would just put my little arrows like that. And if you hate arrows, first of all, you're missing out on life. And secondly, uh, you can always do it like that. But don't do both. Choose one or the other. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do arrows here. Um, now over here, I'm going to add my arrows here because that's standard. But check this out. In between the half inch, I can also do two arrows kind of pointing in like that. So bing, bing. And that says in here, in between these two lines is a half inch. Uh, rather than having the two arrows pointing out. Hold on, I can't do this. Pointing out like that. You can have them kind of squeezing in. And that's kind of that's kind of another standard way of doing it that you'll sometimes see in technical drawing like that. Um, make sure it's neat and clear. Make sure it's legible. This is the completed level three drawing. I will go ahead and create more demos, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. 
I want to make sure that everybody has plenty of access to uh, understanding how each one of these drawings should look when complete. This demo is going to be for the levels four and five technical drawings. I'm gonna do them in order. I'm gonna go pretty quick and I'm not gonna explain everything. Now that you kind of are more familiar with how to draw the title bar and do labeling and dimensioning and stuff like that, I'll give a little bit of commentary, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be talking about kind of the solution to drawing the different views. Now, one of the strategies that I've wanted us to kind of concentrate on is just looking at the isometric and visualizing what those different views should look like based on what you're seeing and uh, the information you're getting just from the isometric. And I think it's a really good uh, skill or habit just to kind of start like sketching it out on the back of a piece of paper or on a napkin or something, just so that you kind of know what you're aiming at. You wanna do all the mental work ahead of time. So what I would do is I would look at this and I would envision myself looking down from the top, looking over from the side, looking over from the front, and trying to figure out what is it that I see. And I, I think that when I look at the top, I know I'm seeing a one inch width on the left like this, and I know that that's one inch high, because that's what this is. And I know that there's a line that comes across like this, but I don't know what angle it's at because now I'm seeing this weird thing like that. So uh, maybe the top view isn't always the best one to start with. Maybe I wanna start with the side view, which is also an inch high. And I know that it's two inches wide like this. So about twice as wide, right? So that's two inches and that's gonna be one inch. And I know that on the right, I'm gonna have something that comes up a half inch here. So that's gonna come up a half inch. And then uh, basically this corner, I see it connecting to that corner. So from there, I can start to try to figure out what my other views are gonna look like. I'm bringing this line up and I'm bringing this line up to try to get my top view. Now my top view looks like it's in the wrong scale. So I'm gonna try and just draw that a little bit more sensibly so it makes sense. I'm bringing these lines up just like I would when I'm actually drawing this with my ruler. I know that I'm seeing something that's an inch deep. So that's one inch like that. And I know that it's a straight line from this corner to this corner. And it's another straight line from this corner to this corner. So to my amazement, I see that the top view on this actually looks identical to the top view in my level one drawing. It looks just like a rectangle. It's just now that I've seen the isometric, I know that this edge is farther away from me than this one when I'm looking down at it from the top. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can figure out what my front view is gonna look like. I wanna find any point that's an edge and bring that line over. And I know that my front view is one inch wide. So that's one inch right there. And I know that it is one inch high overall. And I have this little one in half inch area in front of me that's close. And then this whole thing is far away. So now I've kind of figured out what my whole drawing should look like. Just by doing it freehand and uh, just using that logical inference of imagining the different views and imagining how they translate uh, into the, um, the head-on views of those different faces. Once I've got that, I can kind of put this aside and uh, I can just use that as my reference. All I have to do now is use my ruler and my eraser and my steady hand to draw everything in a way that uh, it looks neat and clear. At this point, I should have some techniques for very quickly laying out my drawing. I'm gonna start uh, going really fast on 
getting in that like tidal bar and border and all that stuff. So here we go. Half inch, half inch. Come up from the bottom, half inch. So I've drawn little marks at half of an inch, one inch, and eight inches. Because my paper is eight and a half wide, or eight and a half high, uh, I know that that's where I'm coming in on each side. I can come over here and do the same thing. Half inch, one inch, eight inches. Then I can turn it around this way. And I can already start drawing my horizontal lines because I'm just lining up my ruler with those dots. And I'm starting a half inch over and I'm drawing my line until I get to 10 and a half inches because I have an 11 inch piece of paper. I'm coming down and doing the exact same thing at the next set of dots. Line them up, hold the ruler nicely and firmly in the middle, draw my line across, stop at 10 and a half. Coming down here, line the ruler up with the edge, Make sure it's crossing those dots that I drew. Start at a half inch. Draw it and stop at 10 and a half. Coming over on the right now, all I have to do is connect the corners. Next, I draw my title bar. I'm using a clear ruler. And with my clear ruler, ruler, I can actually figure out how high up to make things based on where my lines are intersecting the various measurements. So there's these little notches in the ruler and I can line those up with lines and get different kind of uh, heights on things that way. But you can do this in whatever way is easiest for you. As long as you are making clear guidelines that are straight and parallel so that you can write your name nice and clearly between them in all caps. Don't forget the date and identify the drawing. We've already done that legwork of figuring out what to draw. It might be that you're going to figure out at some point that you made a mistake or something and it's a good idea to revisit your isometric regularly in order to check your work. But if you've already done all that work and you know that this is right, you can start drawing immediately and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, in order to make sure everything's lined up, I am going to use my ruler to make sure that the top of my top view is parallel to the top of my title, or sorry, to the bottom of my title bar. Light line first, and then I'm gonna come down and figure out uh, where those two inches need to be. I am going to come over with my ruler and do the same thing that I just did under the title bar. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here as well. That way, I know that these lines at least will be parallel to the inside edges of my drawing inside that, uh, that border. So now I can come over here and find those two inches, just like that. And I can come down here and give myself something to aim towards. I can even put in the dark line already. I'm thinking ahead. I know that I'm gonna have to do this side view down here. So I'm already drawing this line and I've already drawn this line. I'm saving myself a little bit of work further on down the road. I'm planning the whole thing in advance. Um, now I can start to measure heights. I know I need an inch here and I need an inch here. So I can come down from here and find that inch. And I can even draw the line. I can come up from here and find this inch and I can even draw the line. I can do the same thing here on this side, except this time, look, I'm coming up a half inch, not a whole inch. This is a whole inch. So 
how am I going to do this? I'm going to connect these two lines, these two dots. I'm going to measure down one inch from here. And I'm going to measure up a half inch from here. And now I can pretty much finish these two views. There's my top view. Here comes my side view. I'm lining up those dots. Pretty fast. And now the front view is the one that actually has a lot more lines in it because you see an edge coming towards you, right? So uh, let's go ahead and pull this stuff over. I've got my half inch up, but I need another dot to aim at. So I can do it from here, or I can come over here and give myself a half inch to aim at by doing this. One half, one. I've drawn two tiny little dots over here. You can probably barely see them because I don't want to have to erase them later. And I'm lazy. I don't want to do a whole bunch of work. So <clears throat> I want to make it easy for myself to conceal all these little planning marks that I'm making. And the way to do that is to make them very lightly. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to draw all the horizontal lines that I need. So I'm connecting this to that half inch. Nice light line. And I'm connecting this to that half inch with a nice light line. So now I've got all my horizontal lines lightly drawn for the front view. And all I have to do is figure out where I want to place it. I know it needs to be one inch wide and I can pretty much put it anywhere in this quadrant. It's going to be nice and clear and legible and easy to read. That's really important. So I did my one inch wide. I'm eyeballing this to make sure that this is parallel to this. <coughs> if I would have maybe thought about this a little bit further ahead of time, I could have maybe like put my ruler here like this and done it there. You'll figure it out. I think that there are many different ways. Like I could measure this. This is like one, two and three quarter inches to the corner. So I could come up here and do like one, two and three quarter inches. Uh, maybe that's the best thing. And that way, I'm making sure that my, uh, my lines are perpendicular, like that. And then I can come over here and just do an inch. And I want to kind of save myself the time of moving my ruler around a lot. Do all your horizontals, do all your verticals, do all your diagonals, right? Then we're going to do all of our guidelines because we got to write labels now. Save yourself time. Do all your writing of labels. And then we're going to make all of our dimension lines, and then we're going to label all our dimensions, and then we're going to draw the arrows, and then we're done. Remember, when you're dimensioning, always start with the view that gives you the most information about the other views. It saves time, it makes your drawing clearer and easier to read. Guidelines for dimension, same idea. Whenever possible, give yourself less work to do. Here comes the best part. There's level four. Let's do level five. Level five is a lot like level four, except we see that there's this little part added onto it here, and this goes all the way from bottom to top, top to bottom. So the slope of this face is steeper than on level four, and 
there's this little notch sticking up. So for level five, we have to visualize again, what are we going to see when we go to do this drawing? Looking at level five, we are going to visualize those three views. So from the top, we know that uh, we're seeing something that's an inch high, approximately like that, and something that is two inches wide, so like that. And it's going to be kind of a rectangular shape. What other information do we have? We see it comes one inch over to here. So we know that's one inch. And we see that this comes down a half inch. Notice how in the dimensions, it doesn't tell us that this is a half inch. It tells, it, it tells us that this is an inch and this is a half inch. And we have to do that little bit of math that tells us that's a half inch right there. This dimension right here is given too. It shows this is a half inch high, but actually we don't need this dimension. And I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna figure that out on our own. Because what happens is we're gonna come down, we're gonna bring our drawing down for the side view. And we're gonna see that the side view has a base of two inches like that. That is the depth of our object we see that it is one inch high, and we see that there's this strong triangle coming from here all the way to there, and I'm doing that freehand. And then we see that this comes down like that and basically looks like this. So we're not actually going to need to measure that. We're gonna figure that out as soon as we drop this down. When we come over for our front view, we're going to move all these lines and we are going to see that the top has a line going all the way across, that the bottom has a line going all the way across, and they connect like this. And we're going to see that there's a half inch and then this comes down to wherever this meets it, like that. So we know that this is approximately what our drawing should look like. Obviously, our drawing is going to be spread out a little bit more. It's going to be done with a ruler instead of freehand. And it's going to be labeled and dimensioned. So let's take a look at what that looks like. With our new piece of paper, the first thing we need to do is set it up. We need that border and title bar. Nicely set up and now we are going to pretty much block in the drawing the same way we did before using our ruler to make sure that everything is parallel to the border of the drawing. So the first thing I want to do is get all my horizontal and vertical outside lines in uh, and I'm just going to use the width of my ruler to make sure that I have a good margin there so that everything looks great. I only need three lines to do this. So there we go. I can go back to my isometric or I can go back to my little plan that I drew. And again, I have already done the mental exercise of making sure this is all correct. Or I can look at my isometric in order to refer to it. Let's start with the top view. I'm going to um, take a photo of this and put it up in the corner of the screen while I'm working uh, so that you can refer back to it as well. Coming down here, I am making one and two inch uh, dots to connect my marks to. I know that I'm going to need one of these to drop down a half inch from here and I know that it's going to come down like that too. I don't actually need the line to be anywhere near here but it does need to come to the top and I can just go ahead and measure my top view is almost done. 
Now for the side view, by the way, I can check that against the little plan that I made. Does that look right? I think so. I can check it against the isometric. If I'm looking down, I'm seeing this in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm seeing this kind of uh, almost like a, a lowercase b on its side. And that looks about right to me. I can check the measurements. I can check the angles. Everything looks right. Now I'm going to draw the side view. I know that I come two inches over and one inch up, and there's a, a diagonal line between them. I've got the two inches already marked here. I've got one inch up. I can even go ahead and draw that line in. I can even go ahead and draw this line in. And I'm going to go ahead and mark up one inch from here. I'm going to show you why in a second. So I also know that I need a horizontal line coming from here to there. Not only that, it's going to have to extend into my front view because again, I'm going back and I'm looking at my plans and I know that I need a horizontal line here and here and I need them to line up. So I've drawn it heavily here and lightly here. Now for that diagonal. Now I can just drop this straight down. And that's my side view. Now I can come over and draw the front view. I'm going to go ahead and make it a ruler's width away from the edge here, because that is just easier. I know I need an inch wide here. So I'm going from 9 to 10, or 10 to 9. I also know that I need a half inch. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Give myself that little half inch. And I know that this is going to just connect. And I know that this is going to just connect like this. My side view also is going to have a line here and a line here. So I am going to simply give myself that half inch. And I can connect it now to the intersection here because it represents the same exact line. And I can see that it's going to intersect here just like this. Now I've got my three views. Time to label and dimension them. Here goes. One of the reasons I like to label the width in my front view rather than in my top view is because I can just use the guidelines from the side view to line things up. And I'm going to show you that in a second. First of all, I can use the dimensioning lines. So this is the one with the arrows in it. And secondly, I can use the guidelines for the text twice. I only have to put my ruler down once. That saves me time and energy. Here we go. And done. You're going to notice that I did not include this half inch measurement here because it is something that you could get without measuring. If you know that this drops down to meet the face of this slope, you can take that and actually just kind of like 
understand the dimensions just by understanding the other ones so again less is more you don't want to give redundant information and some of this is a question of logic and some of it is a question of math but we always want to kind of be thinking about what is the easiest clearest way to communicate this so that is levels four and five I hope that you are able to do them efficiently and easily and maybe along the way you're going to be figuring out how to kind of save yourself some work and that's part of the fun of learning how to do this.